And then thirdly, I used to do a lot of speaking engagement on style, and I'd always talk about the third piece. And the third piece is like, if a girl walks in the room just wearing a jeans and t-shirt, meh, jeans, t-shirt, and like a fabulous statement jewelry, and like a fun pair of shoes, that is the third piece that gives you the compliment. We've been friends for a long time. And so I did want to ask you one thing before we get started with our first product is I looked at your website last night and you literally still blog. And I know a lot of people have been saying like, oh, blogs are dead. Like nobody looks at blogs anymore. I have a feeling that you have a different opinion on that. So like, when did you start blogging and do you believe that blogs are not dead? Okay. Let me bite that off one, one thing at a time. Okay. So good questions. I am old school like you. We're OG bloggers. Um, <laughs> You're more OG than me. started my blog. I'm actually trying to remember. I got on Instagram in 2011 when we lived in Austin and it first came out. But I already had a blog. And I had a blog because this might be jumping ahead, but I was a wardrobe stylist for years. We can get mm -hmm. into more of that later. And so I developed my blog before blogs were cool, just simply as a resource to my wardrobe styling clients. I would post sales and Okay. and trends and things like that. Mm -hmm. I wasn't monetized at all. Mm -hmm. um, I think that was probably 2008, 2009 I started my blog. Okay. And so fast forward to today when, you know, most most people are on Instagram and obviously I put the most my most time and attention in Instagram reels and stories. Um, but I do believe that it's so important to still blog and I don't do it as much as I want to. I'd love to be whipping out four to five blog posts a week. It's just Girl, not how, happening. How, no, how I feel good if I get... Okay, you do two. And that's if like I get two, lot. I feel like, like okay, I've like conquered the week. <laughs> um, but I think it's important because the I remember I got advice a long time ago at a bloggers conference and said at the end of the day, all you really own is your blog. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I see all the time influencers getting their accounts hacked and Instagram being taken away and we never know if, like, the platform platforms are going to go away. And so I do try to give my blog some love so that people know I want to train my people, my followers, that they can always go there to get stuff. Mm -hmm. And if God forbid something happened to my social media, that right. that's, that's my mainstay. Right. So do you feel like, cause I know that you do a lot of like, we can go ahead and start our makeup. Okay. Go ahead and Please. start that while we're I talking. I want to put some makeup on this fair face. We'll, we'll go ahead and get started. Okay. Um, I know that you do a lot of like blog collaborations with brands and that sort of thing. Do you feel like brands value blogging or do they just want social media from you? Cause I, I ask these questions cause I know a lot of people still want to start doing like influencer stuff and blogging. Yeah. And since you've been doing it so long and you've probably seen a huge like shift and transition, huge shift. um, do brands ask you like, Hey, will you write a blog post? Is that even a thing anymore? Or Not as much creative? as it used to be. Like it used to be when I would get a partnership, it would always be a blog post, a Facebook post, an Instagram post, a Pinterest post, sometimes a Twitter post that really dates me. Mm -hmm. Um, but now, like, does Twitter even a thing anymore? Not for fashion oh, bloggers. Scott, no, Scott thinks it is, though. Scott's okay. like, you got to get on Twitter. I'm like, I don't have... I, we I'm do not like have time out. for that. I'm capped out. <laughs> yeah. um, but no, I don't... I would say I still get asked to do blog posts for certain campaigns, but not as much. I would say about, like, half as much as I used to. Um, but I try to keep... Even, what I try to do a lot of times is if I'm already developing the content and pictures for Instagram, uh -huh. slap them on the blog. I've already taken the time to create that. Right. Um, because that is going to live there, you know, forever on the mm -hmm. blog. And it's also searchable. But and I do have a lot of um, more established companies that I work with especially like lifestyle companies, furniture, home stuff. Mm -hmm. um, they understand too how important blog posts are because they, they're SEO searchable and people can yeah. find their stuff. It's not just like a one and done right. Instagram post. So, so when you say SEO searchable, are you, with all these photos that you have taken, do you have someone that does all the back end stuff for you, like alt texture photos and stuff, or do you actually do, do you do the writing for your blog post? Do you have someone else write for no, you? No, and I need to. So I shouldn't even be using the word SEO because I'm no expert in that. I just know that certain brains will be Sounds like, good. Yeah. Sounds good. I need, in, in, in my next life, when I have more time, I need to, um, I need to hire someone to do that. There's like a list that's never ending, as you know, of things that I should be doing. But oh, I, I 100%. I'm trying to be a full-time mob and full-time blogger, and mm -hmm. you know how that goes. Yes. Something sure. has to go by the wayside. We've known each other a long time. One thing I don't know that I know about you, so you're um, a fellow UGA alumni like me. Yes, go dogs. Um, go dogs. What was your major in college? I don't think I know Business that. Business with the emphasis in marketing. 
Really? Okay, so that works out well for you nowadays, though. So did you know this is what you'd be doing when you were in college? No way. What did you think you wanted to do? Well, when I first went to school, I wanted to go into... I originally started in journalism. I wanted to be a broadcast journalist and interview people at the Oscars. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. And then my English teacher here told me that he would make everyone ha uh, hate writing and that everyone would fail his class. And I, he really did make me hate writing. And what? for like that was semester, his goal. Yeah, it was just like a weed out, and so I decided to switch to business, which then a lot of people said would be a more versatile degree, and I'm glad that I did, since now I'm basically a business, a business owner. Uh, definitely. So no regrets there. Mm -hmm. um, but no, I, I've always been an entrepreneur, even since like a young age, and always loved clothes and fashion and makeup and all the stuff. So mm -hmm. I think for friends and family that have known me for a long time, it's not very surprising to them that this is what this I wound up do. turning into a business. Right. Slowly but surely over time. So what was like your first job out of college? My first job out of school is actually worked here with Campus Crusade, a student ministry now called Crew, and ran the Greek ministry. Say it again? The what? Crew, Campus Crusade, which is like a Christian oh, ministry. It's now okay. called Crew. Okay. Little known fact about me. No, I didn't know that. And oh my gosh, I love I this. led, like, um, I basically worked with, like, sorority girls. Okay. And, did, like, helped with, like, what's it called? The freshman year stuff. Like, orientation. Or it helped with all like their new, freshman, new, new freshman stuff. orientation yes. stuff. Okay. Yes. Okay. So, I got, the cool thing about that is, my brother, I have a brother that's three years younger, but we're four grades apart, and we never got to be in school together, and he came to Georgia, so then I got to be here in Athens with him. Oh. I stayed two more years, so it's here six years total, four in school, two working, Right. and it was really cool because I got to be here with him. With him. Oh my gosh, that is really, really neat. By the way, this is tricking me out that I can only use seven products because I'm having to skip steps. Well, here, I'm going to give, I'm going to throw you a wishbone. You can use my multi-use palette. Okay. Because I'm going to be, I had to use this to do, um, this is my Pixie Beauty palette. It's like a highlighter I contour palette. This. But I use this as eyeshadow, eyeliner, and to fill in my eyebrows and highlighter. So is I'm there something I can use as a powder or not really? Yeah. So like this is like a setting powder. Oh, okay, and also perfect. I have the Laura Mercier powder if you want to use that. So yes, you can totally steal that. Thank so you. feel free to use this. I have combo skin. I'm like, I need some powder this humidity. I know. When I tell my guests to bring seven products, it it's, sounds like a lot. But when you love makeup like we do, it's actually a wee bit difficult. Um, I think that when I had Beth really on is. with my last episode, Beth Jolali. Which Jolali, is so good, by the way. Thank you. I, I think she actually brought more than seven. I didn't say anything. Because I was like, you know what? Y'all do. You do you. Um, all right. So my... Um, Another thing I want to know about you. So you are a mom of twins, boy, girl. Yeah. Um, how have you started? Because so you started off your blog at by Lauren as it was just style, right? Like it was specifically style in just the beginning. Just fashion. Yep. Just fashion. Um, but you have since kind of um, transitioned yourself or expanded kind of your, I guess, specialty into you do beauty and your home stuff lately is like. Next level makes me want to redecorate Aww, my entire thank you. house. Like when you were coming over and I've seen what you've done with your house with the renovations, like with the outside lights and everything that you have done, like you're really good at the whole like home decor and everything. Like showing people how to do different things with like outdoor patio seating and indoors and stuff. Thank you. What made you decide to kind of expand like what you talk about on the blog? Anything um, in particular? Well, props to my mom. She's an interior designer. So I grew up with her kind of training me in some of that. Just you okay. know, watching her. Again, I'd forgotten about that. Um, so I've always like enjoyed it. And we moved in 2020, but our house before that, we completely renovated before we sold. And so, and it got some really cool, fun opportunities, like with to do two commercial shoots with Home Depot in our house. Um, I was part of that for oh, makeup yeah, and hair for one of them. Yes. With Brian Patrick Flynn. It was yes. so fun. With Brian Patrick Flynn, which looking back at that, and I love following him now, he is the funniest He really person. is. He's a good follow on Instagram. Yes, he He's is. also one of the kindest people. He was a joy to work with. But yes, I did your makeup and hair for Yeah, so that kind of gave me confidence to, to start sharing more home posts. And uh -huh. um, then when we bought our house in 2020, it was like 
we live in a 26 year old house that there's still so many projects left to do. But, um, I really got great feedback from the first house. People love like a real life, you know, like I don't have like a multi-million dollar budget for renovations. So uh -huh. people I think like to see how I'm like splurging and saving and, but it looks multi-million dollar. When you see that, your so. pictures, it looks so good. Like so, I cannot wait to see it in person. Thank you. Yes. I mean, I've, I'm really enjoying the more lifestyle side of things as, as I kind of grow up with my blog. Cause really I have, it's like, I went from being like, no kids to two kids, <laughs> pregnancy fashion, yeah. two kids, survival as a twin mom. Right. And uh, now I can do some more fun stuff. Well, and I feel like ever since like two years ago when COVID hit and we were all at home, everybody wants to love their home more because we it's were true. in it for so long. And, but I think that's also a natural progression as we get older in our 40s. Well, you just turned 40 though, right? I'm 41. You are 41. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm still older than you. But we're in our 40s and home is like the best place to be. Yes. And you learn, you learn to enjoy, yeah, entertaining more. You want to be... Yes. Mike and I always talk about we want to be the house that our kids want to be there with their friends. So you yes. want to make it like mm -hmm. the best you can. Exactly. So, yeah. So hopefully a lot more home content's coming. So soon. like with the Home Depot type thing, and I'm sure people are curious about this because I'm curious about this because no one's ever contacted me about doing anything with my home or renovations. Do these brands reach out to you like with the Home Depot opportunity? How does that come about? Does someone recommend you? Do you go after brands? Do they come to you? Like... What Sometimes a mix. Home Depot came to me and asked me if, um, hired me as their first fashion blogger to oh, do really? home decor, which was really fun. So they were, they liked the mix that that wasn't, I wasn't a DIY blogger, like their typical bloggers at the time they were working with. Okay. So, um, yeah. So, so now I have relationships with several great brands like Frontgate, Green and Road, um, um, work with some local companies and, You did um, Wayfair because you did the twins room through Wayfair, didn't you? Jocelyn Main and Wayfair. Jocelyn yes. Because yes. yes. that was like amazing what you did yes. with those rooms. Thank you. Speaking of collaborations, we're going to kind of switch gears a little bit. We're both wearing your collaboration oh, God, jewelry with sequin jewelry, um, a hope little necklace. hope necklace with the little dogwood yes. bloom. All my kind necklaces of, are getting flipped around. Kind of tell I'm us. Swinging my head too much. <laughs> tell everybody a little bit about that because, I mean, jewelry, obviously, I mean, I love jewelry. That's like yes. one of the ways I like to switch up my look. I, I don't buy as many new clothes, I buy more new makeup, but I will buy jewelry to Except kind of switch. You're an accessory girl. Yes, I'm an accessory Which girl. I can appreciate. So I loved that you did this um, collaboration, you designed this with sequin jewelry. So tell me a little bit about that process and the meaning behind these necklaces because they are so beautiful. Yes. So sequin, by the way, shout out to sequin. They're one of my favorite costume jewelry companies. Jennifer's wearing one oh. of their awesome rings. Mm -hmm. um, both of my necklaces are sequin. Um, and so they approached me last year. <laughs> We're like, which one do we look at? Well, make sure at? you see the okay. jewelry. Mm -hmm. All right, so they yeah, approached me last one. year about doing a collaborative design process and I immediately knew that I wanted my, I wanted it to be a necklace that had meaning and um, my dad passed away suddenly in 2020 and my mom and I talked a lot about the meaning and our whole family about hope and that's just been like the kind of my word of 2020 and I think kind of will be like a lifetime word of like you can get through so much in life if you have hope. And, um, I feel like, especially coming out of 2020, that's like something that everybody had lost or grief in their life, whether or not they lost a person, they lost something mm -hmm. and something that we could all collectively cling to is hope. So I wanted my, um, I, so I told the designers that I wanted, um, that to be the key word and I loved, they did research and they found out that the dogwood and magnolia flower are actually the symbol, like the floral symbols of hope. It's also cool because that's a very Georgia Southern flower. Yeah. Yeah, so I felt like it was like a dual representation of my Southern heritage, me being like a Southern Southern Belle, yes, that's a Southern Georgia Peach. Mm -hmm. um, and then the back of it has the word Hope etched. And these yes. actually sold out, and I am working with the company to hopefully oh, good. have a new uh, relaunch. Because I get questions from followers literally every week. People are like... Yeah, I mean, mm. it's so pretty, and it just kind of goes with everything. And it's and a great gift, too. Like it I, is, A yes. friend going through a really hard time right now, and I'm they're sending me one to send to her. I'm like, we... I just want to be able to have them to encourage people, too. Mm-hmm. And there's nothing better than, like, a statement piece of jewelry that actually has a little meaning behind it, That's you right. know? Like, it just means so much more when you wear it and when you put it on, you know? Totally. Um... Yeah, that's really neat. So I'm glad that Thanks we're wearing these. Thanks for sportingers. Mm -hmm. Of course. Well, I wear it a lot. And I love I love that you layered it with another necklace. And I felt like my neckline was a little bit too big and bulky yes, today. Yes, this neckline is too much. 
Yeah, yeah yours is more out. Yeah, yours is more open and everything. Okay, so what else did I want to talk to you about? Because we we actually have a very big day today, which is very fun. So Lauren lives in Atlanta. I live here in Athens, um, and she's coming in today to obviously do this recording with me. But you're also about to kind of even branch out your website and your brand further with Lauren Lilly. Yes. So explain to me your thought process behind that. I know why the name, but everybody else might not know what the significance of the name is behind it. So what is Lauren Lilly? Because it says coming soon on your coming website. Coming soon. Mm-hmm. Yes. I don't know what it is. Hopefully coming soon. There's a lot to be done in the next month to get this thing going. But um, my daughter's name is Lily. And mm-hmm. I've had a dream for the past couple of years of launching uh, my own shop with a longer term dream of designing clothes and accessories. Wow. But um, so I wanted to name it Lauren Lily. So I hope that Lily will want to be involved in some of the process as she grows up. She's 11 now mm-hmm. and um, would love to have some things. And I will have some things launching that she and I style kind of mom daughter, but not in a cheesy way. Okay. Jennifer <laughs> has a daughter about the same age. And so yes. they understand like they're very particular. They don't want things that are overly girly or oh, this or that, you know, for sure. Vivian is almost like the anti Jennifer. She's it's almost like she Same. doesn't want to be nearly as girly as me, and she wants, wants to be like her brother. She wants to be sporty. Sporty. Yeah, and I yes. think that that might be a trend for So I'm like, whatever. Well, you just yes. you do you for right now. Maybe Someday they'll appreciate you'll... your makeup, and Lily will appreciate my shoe collection. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, um, so it's going to be an online shop. So online shop, hopefully coming in May, early May. Um, so I had to kind of hone down. My long-term vision is to... Um, design things but it, and I actually am starting with a few accessories that I'll uh, be collaborating on designs with different vendors but um, I kind of had to hone it down and initially I'm going to be launching with accessories because I am like the self-declared much like you accessory queen oh, for sure. love accessories mm-hmm. that really taps into my styling background of I would always tell people if you don't if you're not happy like with your body shape I used to work with a lot of people in my styling background you're trying to lose weight I'd be like well then let's concentrate on accessories because you always feel good in them regardless of if you for sure. feel good about your shape or size right. and it's also an affordable way to change your mm-hmm. wardrobe and then thirdly I used to do a lot of speaking engagement on style and I I'd always talk about the third piece and the third piece is like if a girl walks in the room just wearing a jeans and t-shirt meh, jeans t-shirt and like a fabulous statement jewelry and like a fun pair of shoes that is the third piece that gives you the compliment okay and so all that to say i'm starting with a line of curated accessories it'll be everything from some bags some sneakers and shoes totes um and then of course jewelry i'm wearing a couple things i'll be launching these fun hoops I just got these in yesterday. Oh, so those will all be on your website? Yes. Oh, and, and then those some are really cute. colorful accessories, of course, for summer. Okay. Um, and then long term, hopefully, I'll have some of my own curated things that I design. But I'm meeting today with. Mm hmm. Tell me the name. I'm totally blanking. Beth. Beth, thank you. Beth of um, Little, Little Light Co. Little Light Co. Yes. Because I love candles. And long term for my shop, I do want to have some lifestyle and home items, but I'm going to start with a signature candle. And so I'm meeting with someone that Beth introduced me to, this local here in Athens, which I love, local woman-owned company, Mm -hmm. to pick out a signature candle coming to my site soon. So that is really, really neat. Um, And I'm so glad that I get to tag along. Yes! (laughs) I get to tag along and see... um, and get to see Beth and get to see her space because I've been buying her candles for a while. There's actually one over there in a little white um, milk candle... Little milk candle teacup. No, it's a little... That's a powder. Scott's trying to get me my candle and he picked up a powder. Yeah, that's it. So this is from Little Light Coach. It's called Milk Glass, I think. But it's almost done. That smells great. And I get like this about candles. Once I have a favorite one and it's almost done with, I almost don't want to burn it because I don't want it to go away. Me too. And that's what I'm hoping my signature candle will be like. (laughs) Yeah. With a really cool vessel. She has so many fun vessel options. Oh my gosh. So fun. So yeah. So y'all come back and check out... Yeah, um, Lauren Lily, Lauren. And, and, and one thing I do, the last plug I'll say is like I want to infuse my styling advice into everything. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm really hoping that, or I will be sharing like whether it's you know buying a pair of earrings or sneakers. Uh-huh. I want to share on the site like ways to wear things so that as you as a consumer go here's three ways I can wear this because people get stuck. They're like I bought this big pair of yellow earrings, but what do I do with them? Well, that's like people when they come to me like for. Uh, makeup lessons I tell them to bring their current makeup that they use just so I can kind of see where they're starting from but also sometimes they will bring like a big eyeshadow palette that like they felt the need to buy but they don't know what What to do do with it yeah so I have to kind of guide them like okay this is great here's how to best use it so yeah I'm sure that the same thing feels that way when it comes to like fashion so that's good that you'll be able to give some people advice so everything that's going to be on your website is going to be kind of a reflection of your own style 
do you think? Yes, okay. yes, totally. Okay. And but then I'm making sure I'll have some pieces that everyone could wear, just like some more. Like I'm, I'm doing these hoops, might not be for everybody, and they'll be in a smaller version. That'll be okay, a little yeah. less crazy. You know, yeah, not but, that these are crazy, but. No, I've got, I've got some hoops way bigger than that that you can like hula hoop in. <laughs> I think that that's pretty normal what you're wearing right now. Um, okay, so I did want to jump into social media. Because I feel like that's just yes. kind of a big, you know, a big thing for influencers and bloggers and all. And it's ever-changing. And I love to hear people's, like, opinion on where it's going. So, you're really big on Instagram. Like, you have 115,000 followers, which I still can't break over 11,000. And we've basically had Instagram the same amount of time. So, I want to know what you think. And this is just your own opinion. What do you think has been the secret sauce for Instagram for you personally, for like growing to over 100,000 followers. Cause that's hard. It's hard to do. I don't think anybody, really, and you do it organically. Like you don't do some buying, of the yeah. buying bots. Cause you know, you can tell that with the people that are buying oh, it and getting those weird emoji comments on everything. Totally. And then they've grown like 5,000 in a couple days. Yeah, so, not worth it. We, I know we've talked about that. Like it's a struggle because you see other people that maybe you know that have, not grown organically. Right, right. But you have, you're at 115,000. What do you think has been your secret sauce behind Instagram um, and growth? Or like what? what well, do you I wish I could have a secret sauce to growing now because I've been stagnant for a while. But okay, one thing I always tell brands and I am proud of is I might not have the largest audience, but my people are loyal. They've been with me a long time. They know uh -huh. me and they'll, they trust my recommendations. They're right. encouraging people. Mm -hmm. um, like rec like when I work with Atlanta companies, they'll always say, not, like uh, my girl that does my Botox, she's like, not just, do you, you don't just send me a lot of people. You send me great people. And that's like, makes me really happy. Oh, yeah. And you know, that, that these are people that are not just loyal to me, but they're really awesome people so I think yeah. I think maintaining my following over the years I've just learned more and more to get comfortable with my own skin and be who I am and share like when my dad was dying like people just wanted real oh, yeah, um, for sure and not that I would ever want that to happen to get engagement but I think that actually brought a lot of loyalty I think the more I realize like as I get older like People do want the real, real. It's not like you have to tell them a sob story every day, but they want to see the behind the scenes. They want to see you without yeah. makeup, how what you look like in carpool line. Right. The, 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 the vulnerability. The vulnerability. The vulnerability. Well, which is kind of what I wanted to do with like this uh, joyful faces is I make you show up with no makeup on because I know we it don't like that. Vulnerable. It feels weird. But people love to see the before and after and that, you know, it's okay. We're comfortable in our own skin. And I think that helps the older, again, the older we get, the the more secure we get and like here here it is we're gonna here's who I am and yeah. here's who I'm not yeah and I think yeah. I've had to stay in my own lane like the temptation is to like I'm just getting some into reels but like I can't mm -hmm. whip out a reel like some younger people that don't have kids my age every day uh -huh. that's okay I'm just having to be okay with that like yeah. on the weekends I'm with my kids mostly doing all the sports games as you are it's mm -hmm. like I can't whip out the content to the same extent yeah. and yeah. so I think also just having to say like Okay, my people are gonna like me. I might not have the biggest audience, but but like hopefully said, they're genuine. They're you genuine, know, so genuine, and audience. they know what they're gonna get from me. And I'm not gonna have like amazing new content every single day because it's not the stage of life. It is not worth it to me at this yeah. stage in life. I would want to be present with my family. Um, when I feel like that's when burnout occurs is if you were to try to keep up with you know people that are doing like two or three reels a day, which you know some people do that. I don't know how they do it. But some More, people power do that. <laughs> More power to them. More power to them. Yeah, um, but then that would just produce burnout. So do what you can, and you know the rest will fall into place. And the fact that you're about to bust out a new um, website, I mean that's a lot of work. Yes, you know? I'm having to figure out where in my day is this going to happen. Yeah, so. do you have like someone that's like guiding you along the way with that? Like do you I just realized I had designer? something in my tooth this whole time, and you didn't tell me. Well, I haven't seen anything. Where? I don't even know what it is. <laughs> There's a vulnerable moment. <laughs> Well, honestly, I didn't even notice that it was something in your tooth. Uh, you ever uh, try to use that? I don't know. I thought have you ever tried shadow. using a Q-tip to get something up? <laughs> oh, well, it is what it is. It is what it is. Um, all right, so I know that Scott's about to tell okay. me that um, my time is Sorry, almost Sorry, I still up. interrupted you. No, anyway. no I'm so sorry. What kind of friend is she really? <laughs> no, I totally would be the one that would pull something out of your nose or your teeth. I didn't <laughs> you would. notice. I wasn't. I guess I wasn't looking at your teeth. I've been looking at your eyeballs because you've done a great job with your eye makeup. Okay. Um, oh, okay. So before we wrap this up, tell me just like I know I had you bring like your you know top seven products from home that yeah. you love. Just name three that you're wearing right now that you like truly are like oh my god I love this so much like I can't do without this product. Okay. 
Um, it Cosmetics CC mm -hmm. Cream. This yeah. is one that Jennifer recommended years ago. Um, I love this for like days like today when I really want like a good coverage for photo shoot days, events, and mm -hmm. it has SPF. I really have been liking the illumination one. It I know your skin looks very glowy and it's really glowy. Mm -hmm. So people are afraid of it. I'm like, tell people it doesn't make you like crazy shiny. Mm -mm. It's just really good. So I've been using this for years. What love shade it. are you wearing in that? Mm, light. Okay. And I remember you telling me like you go lighter. This is what you put me in a long time ago, and I'm pretty tan right now. From well, I'm not surprised. Beach. I would sit here. I was thinking that you were probably a medium in that. Maybe I need to change, I but I did put bronzer on. So. Okay, because I was about to say that should yeah, light kind of shocks me. I would think it needs to be darker for you. But yeah, maybe you did good with your bronzer. So the bronzer. So my favorite bronzer was the Beauty Counter one, and it got discontinued sadly. And so I love Fake Bake self tanning products. Um, mm -hmm. I got to know the owner of the company, an awesome woman owned company on Instagram. Really? So then okay. she sent me, she heard me like sharing my woes about my favorite bronzer not being available anymore. So she sent me the fake bake bronzer. Ooh, it looks pretty. And I really like the color. It has a lot of color. So it's, I think really good for this time of year, spring and summer. Some of y'all might feel like in winter it's too much, but it's mm -hmm. great because you can also like put on your shoulders and everything. And I think that really definitely good. help adjust your light color yes. CC cream though. Oh, it's yes. so pretty. So, and it has some illumination in it as well. Okay. Um, and then oh, this is my favorite lip gloss ever. I, this is like my signature color. It's the beauty counter mm -hmm. color intent, a beyond gloss, um, Lip gloss, and I love the color raspberry, which I'm wearing. I wear this on the tennis courts. I Ooh, wear this pretty. pretty much day and night. I also love layering it over a lipstick for a more, like, pop for night. Or There was another beauty counter lip gloss that you wore all the time that you actually got for me that I finally finished a I while ago. Was it Peony or something? Peony. That's another really good. What? Are they still make it? Yes. Oh, they do. That's, like, I a really good liked that color. Um, it was a Just pretty pink. pink. A pretty pink. This yeah. is like a little bit more hot pink, and that's like a little bit more of a cool pink. Okay. Yeah. Those um, are pretty cool. And then this is an this is another recommendation from you. Excuse my kind of mm -hmm. dirty bottle, but <laughs> I was using the um, Better Than Sex mascara for a long time mm -hmm. by is that Tarte? Too Faced. Too Faced. Uh -huh. And then Jennifer turned me on thanks to her Instagram <laughs> to Lash Paradise, and this stuff is like what six bucks. Yeah. And it's, it's great. It's so good. And I'm kind of like my thing is. I will spend money where I need to when it comes to makeup. Yeah. If it looks good, you know, I'll spend the money. But mascara, you ha we use it so much. It has to be constantly replaced. Out. Yeah. I just cannot, uh, I can't be doing like a $25, $30 mascara every two or three no, months. No, So it is, drugstore mascara is definitely like the way to go for yeah, me. Yeah, and this is sure. one to try. I recently Love just it. finally got smart enough to put one in my new car because. Oh, good. Um, I ran out the other day without mascara. My whole face was done and I felt so naked. And you I left the house without your mascara. And people on. are like, you look different today. I'm like, stop, I don't have mascara. So I ran to Target, grabbed another one. And I'm like, this is going in oh my, my car God. for those emergencies. I leave an emergency um, deodorant in my car. Smart. No, that's, that's very a, smart. So always, I wanted my tennis bag. It's always needed. Okay, so here's, um, I got two more questions for you and okay. then we'll scoot because we got to go to lunch. We got to go to your candle meeting. We have so much to do. Um, but I wanted to ask you, as um, someone that loves Instagram so much, what's one or two Instagram accounts that you follow that inspire you? It can be any. It can be. It can be in your genre. It can be out of your genre. What? Who are two influencers that you follow that you feel like kind of speak to you that you really enjoy? Either they're giving you advice, entertaining. Such um, a hard question because I, I love so many people on Instagram. I know um, you're really good. And you're one of them. I know. Well, that's okay. I know I am. But yes. two other people. Yeah, you're a really good. I will say one thing about Lauren, if y'all don't follow her on Instagram, she you're a very good encourager of other women and their accounts and small business. You're really good about that. I need to be Thank better you. at that. But you do no, share. You, are too. you share a lot of um other women's accounts and like I don't know you lift women up really well and I really Aww, appreciate about it. I think that's why I like you so much. Thank you. All right, but two okay. people other than it's me. So on hard Instagram. to pick because I really love following. Like I'm blessed to have an awesome community on Instagram that I genuinely like the people and following them. That sounds cliche, but it's true. Yeah. Um, okay, so someone that comes to mind is someone we both know, Tara, the Mrs. Gibby. She went to Fashion <gasps> Week with us. Mm -hmm. Whenever that was, 2015. Yeah, We're just going to say it's 2015. Sounds we good. don't know. Yeah. Um, but she's our beautiful redhead friend. And I Shrinking. like following her. She's also an OG blogger, but she has really done an awesome job over the past couple years. 
curating mother-daughter styles. She's the cutest little girl that Lily and I have traveled with some. Mm -hmm. um, and then travel. She has great travel recommendations. Yes. So now that travel is ramping up again, if you are looking to plan a trip, you need to go to her account. Or if you have a little girl, you need to go to her account. Mm -hmm. um, and she's a, she's also a very supportive person. And she's um, out in Arkansas? In Arkansas. Arkansas. Northwest Arkansas. Yes. Which you probably don't know many people from there. No, I really don't. She might be the only one. <laughs> and then a local shout out is my would be my friend Meg Basinger, who she's an, so it's kind of fun. Meg, I would to college with her husband Kelly here at Georgia oh, and okay. then um, we became friends through the influencing world and I kind of like gave her advice starting Instagram and then she branched out and she's like into lifestyle and interiors and launched an interior store in Milton called Stevie Collective and a whole design company and has literally just like blown it up the past year it's been so cool to see her um, grow that so now uh -huh. she is mentoring me with opening a shop so it's oh, kind of cool how nice. I kind of mentored her and like getting into the influencing and then she was like I actually want to own my own business and shop and so now she's really flipped that way but she's a joy to follow because she's a real real person mm -hmm. um mom of three kids and is like a phenomenal entrepreneur and she has like a brick and mortar store she's a brick and mortar store does she sell her stuff online as and well online what's her instagram handle so it's meg basinger but then it's stevie collective stevie s-t-e B-I-E collective. Okay. And a lot of my accessories in my home, like my bookshelves, my kitchen, and all that, she came in and did, and I love all of her stuff. Really? Okay. And I'll make sure that in the description box of this YouTube video, we'll link all of these people that she's talking about and following, yeah. so you can go check them out as well. Um, all right, so I always finish up these um, joyful faces with a rapid-fire question. Um, there's going to be seven, seven of them, so I'm going to give you two options, and you have to say immediately which one comes to mind. You don't okay. have to. You don't have to explain yourself. I feel like I'm with Jimmy Fallon right now. <laughs> does he do? Does he do that? Yeah, he does all sorts of like. He does like all sorts of like well, back and forth. Yeah, I like um, it. I just think it's. I just find it interesting to see what people's like initial reaction is to okay. um, this or that. Okay, so here is the first one, and they're very like low level. Like it's not going to be a hard hard Good. thing for you to pick. Um, beach life or mountain life? Beach. And I feel like I'm probably already know most of your answers. Neutrals or color? Color. Sneakers or heels? Oh, after 2020, sneakers. Okay. I would never have said that before. Um, you got to leave the house, but you can only pick one: makeup or hair. Makeup. Yes. yes. Me too. Um, wine or champagne? Wine. Champagne gives me a headache these days. Oh, <laughs> really? Oh, this is 40. Oh, this is 40. <laughs> um, yeah, I wanted to talk to you about this drink that you're drinking. Yeah. Tell everybody about this whole Celsius. This is not like a... Celsius is like a zero calorie, no, 10 calorie. The grape tastes amazing, like grape soda as a kid. Um, I drink these like once a day, usually in the afternoon slump, but then I found out recently that it has four, it's the equivalent of four shots of espresso. <laughs> When I used to do Orange Theory a few years ago, all the trainers would just walk around drinking them. Now I understand. If you so it the, really gives you a boost of energy? Totally. And it so is delicious. it kind of like a Red Bull? Kind of like a healthier Red Bull. They sell them like a Whole Foods and Fresh Market. Okay. But the grape one is the best. Okay. I it's might have to so go try good. one of those. Watch right. out. Um, dogs or cats? Oh, not cats. Dogs. Because <laughs> <laughs> you have a sweet little dog. I have an awesome lab do you still, buddy. Are you still keeping up his Instagram account? No. Why? But he still has a good following. Oh, I know he's one day, so one day, one day when my kids want to manage it, I'll let them manage okay, it. Okay, you'll they'll manage Buddy's Instagram. Okay, Buddy was um, making good money for a while. <laughs> <laughs> it's too much work. I know you're like, oh, the dog's just gonna have to be a, a yeah. He just has to be a puppy. He paid for himself, so that's right. fine. Okay, last one: winter or summer? Summer, summer. I hate cold weather. You just like to be tan. All the right. time. <laughs> but thanks to fake fake, I can be tan year round. Um, so is so, but this is you said this is natural tan. This, this is, is natural because I just got back from seven days of the beach. But okay, literally, I I wear fake fake twice a week. I put it on twice a week year round. So is fake fake? Is it a mousse? Is it a lotion? There's all it? different kinds. But I like the spray the best. The original spray with like comes like a little buffer, and I buff it in. Oh, and I, really? it's awesome. I'll go play tennis right afterwards. It doesn't like sweat off. It's the best. Okay, I need a new. This self is the first time I have not had it on in probably a year, and I got too much sun at the beach. I'm not proud of that. I'm so, a sunscreen junkie. So it's a spray that you spray into your mitt and then you put it yes. on. Okay. I'll, we'll, okay, we'll put that in the show notes. Yeah, so we're right. gonna have to put that on there too. Okay, so wrapping up, tell everybody where they can find you. Um, like you know your social media handles, your website, you know all that kind all right. of stuff. So Instagram, Lauren Lefever. Do I need to spell it or you'll put it on? I'll, I'll, put, I'll put it yeah. I'll put it in the show notes. <laughs> and then my blog is edit by Lauren. 
And then my new website is is going to be laurenlily.com. Okay. That will be up in the next month. So really, Instagram's like your main thing. Do you do Instagram or blog? No, I don't even have an account. See, I have an account, but I'm not active on it. Every every agency I work with is like, you have to get into that. And I'm like, I don't have time. I like have to make the decision right now if I'm going to launch my shop. I can't spread myself too thin. Right. And was Maybe we'll like, get cool in the next year. <laughs> I mean, I have an account. Like, I was into it when COVID hit, mm-hmm. and I was doing all the dumb dances with my kids. But yes. then when, and then I was kind of like, oh, I, I don't know. I, I think I'm going to get out of the whole TikTok thing. But I still got the account. I could always bring That's it back. Good. You can bring um, it back, girl. If I wanted to. But makeup make up stuff. I know. But now I just enjoy, I enjoy YouTube and I enjoy Instagram. Those are my two my two platforms that yes. I just love the most right now. Um, okay. Well, sense. thank you for coming. Now. Thanks for having me. All right. Your face looks good. You approve? It looked, it, so you know what approved. we're going to do now? Put on our fake eyelashes. I know. Yeah. I know. The fake lashes are going to be next because we do have we do have a ladies lunch to go to and we have you know, um, the candle thing. That's so right. we'll Yeah. Well, um, that might be a that might be something that we need to do off camera just because it takes a little mm-hmm. bit of extra time, you know. But yeah, we'll we'll add the false lashes. All right. Well, hopefully I'll have you. I will have to have you back when Lauren Lily launches. Let's do it. And we can, you know, talk we can talk that. about that. And you can tell everybody your journey of like starting a second website, which sounds bananas. Oh, sure stories to tell. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Okay. Good. All Thanks right. for having me. All right. Bye, y'all. Bye. It's not your camera. You kept looking at that camera. That camera's pointed at Lauren. Oh, it's okay. It's not right. That's your camera. All right. Well, I said a little bit to this camera. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Your makeup looks great. Good. Yeah. Let me add one more Rakota mascara. I didn't add this. I kept wanting to put the mirror like up close, but then I know that gets in the way. But this is a new mascara by um, Maybelline that's supposed to stay on like forever. It looks forever, like really forever. nice and feathery. It does, right?